Good evening friends. I have been getting numerous posts and queries regarding how to pass SQL uh, parameters for SQL task. I mean how to pass an input parameter and also an output parameter when we are using SQL tasks. So in this session what I have done is I have just drawn a comparison uh, as SQL task parameters uh, when we are passing them it, it is dependent upon the connections uh, or the connection that we use which is OLEDB or ADO.NET connections or, or, or various connections so basically the most widely used connections uh, for SSIS would be OLEDB or, uh, and ADO.NET so I have done a simple comparison uh, on how would we be passing uh, parameters when we are using uh, these two connections so for the same database I have created uh, OLEDB connection pointing to my server servers dev data database uh, and also a ADO.NET connection pointing to my uh, dev database so what we will be considering here uh, is uh, I'll be considering the sales table which is uh, a very simple one it is a hypothetical table which which contains the customer ID the sales amount and the state or province from where they belong the customer's name so uh, that's it and and we are considering uh, the query uh, as below where we would be passing the straight province and the sales amount and we would be fetching the customer's name uh, so this would be uh, our criteria I have also uh, created a stored procedure uh, to do the same uh, with an output parameter so uh, this stored procedure will re return the customer's name as an output uh, once uh, the input parameters of state and amount uh, are passed the basic query remains the same uh, now moving on to the SSIS package let's see what we have in place so what we have here is uh, I have six uh, I have three comparisons hence six sequence containers where I would be comparing uh, passing input parameters OLEDB versus ADO and passing and returning values OLEDB versus ADO and lastly we'll be seeing how to pass uh, stored procedures uh, uh, input and output for OLEDB and ADO uh, now let's see what we have for here in terms of variables I have three variables in place uh, which is uh, I have var state which is of string type and, and I have initialized the value to be California uh, I have a val sales, a var sales amount which uh, is initialized uh, which is of int type and is initialized to a value of 100 I have left the customer uh, where customer name a string type to be uh, blank since this is uh, the output uh, that we would be seeking with our SQL code uh, now let's see what we have for each of the containers uh, for this sequence can container one this sequence container if you use if you open the SQL task what you see here is I am using the OLEDB connections uh, connection manager uh, and I'm not returning anything on the result set how would you configure is uh, we we'll look at the query first let's go to the parameter mapping so what you would do is you would select the parameter uh, from the parameter mapping you'll see all the variables that you have declared uh, listed over here and then you would cite the, the direction which means either it's an output uh, input or a return value return value is nothing but actually when you when you execute any tsql command it returns a value of success or a failure success is, is usually zero uh, so to capture that value uh, this uh, option is also given to you in the sql uh, task con uh, uh, SQL task so what we have and then we initialize the data type to varchar for uh, the state and parameter name is something which you need to be careful is, is uh, if for OLEDB connection managers the parameter name starts starts with a number I mean it, it starts with it starts with a 0 1 2 and so on for any inputs so for input you would be citing it as 0 1 uh, the sim similarly the amount has been uh, of uh, input and numeric as it is an int, int value and the next thing is uh, 1 so, however the size for uh, these SQL tasks will uh, will just leave it, leave it as it is to minus 1 there is no need to change anything on that front there is no result set mapped out here and this is and uh, the query that you have passed on 
is actually if we are saying select customer from sales where province is is equal to a question mark and the sales amount is greater than a question mark so what does these mean is each of the question marks will be replaced by the parameter mapping uh, by the parameters we have actually initialized uh, in the parameters mapping tab uh, and the order of initialization would also be the same uh, in terms here if you see this question mark will be replaced by the parameter 0 and this will be replaced by the parameter 1 so so remember the order uh, so it will be replaced in the similar order in terms of the declaration so if you go back and see uh, 0 is your state and, and, and 1 is your sales amount so here the same will be replaced uh, in, in uh, the question marks this is how you would write any T-SQL and pass the parameters when you are using a OEDB connection remember that so having done this uh, we are not expecting any return consider this as a T-SQL merely for execution uh, which consumes some output and executes so that's it we are simply considering this uh, considering, considering this example I am executing this execute container uh, or this part of it not the entire SSIS package so this would map uh, and the input columns uh, and, and input parameters and then hence it will execute your uh, container and your, ex and, and your SQL task Right, so you see, as you can see, uh, these the OLEDB parameter mapping and the SQL task executed. Now let's see, let's have a look at uh, ADO uh, parameter how it would be mapped. If you look at uh, this task, what we have here is I'm using an ADO dotted connection and, and I'm using the same ADO dotted connection that I've created. Now moving on to the parameter it's it's all the same we would not uh, we have initialized the sales amount and where's uh, state and the size is also remains as default what we have here is we are going to use a, a, a name which would be acting as a parameter name so you type any name uh, which will actually map to the variable name so that's it and we have said state and amount and then in in the t-sql what we have said is we have declared two variables here and mapped them them to the parameter what I want to show is here the sequence is not important since we have identified the entire thing with an with a name so ADO.NET uh, uh, gives you a better way uh, 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 because you would not have to put it in any sequence that it is not mandatory you just put your you could uh, put this t-sql statement ahead and, and also vice versa so that's uh, so that's uh, the way for you uh, when we are using the ADO connections so it's not important for you to uh, now let's run this and see how the sequence right so as you've seen uh, the SQL task executed perfectly fine now if I change the sequence let me just uh, try and change the sequence and then we'll try to run this it works perfectly fine so this was how you would pass a parameter for for a T SQL statement now we'll look at uh, how you would pass as well as how uh, how we can retrieve or, or, or return a value so if you if you have here we are using a OLEDB connection 
and we have identified a result set here what we are doing is we have written the query for the same query that we have written uh, and also the parameter but in the parameter mapping uh, we have mentioned the same thing the state and the amount but this would be returning a single row we have we have said that this will be returning a single row which we are interested in actually capturing the reason is we cannot use the output parameter for ad hoc tsql statements in oledb for capturing because this connection manager does not provide you uh, provide you uh, so so you will have to collect that value in a form of a result set uh, so what that's that's what we have done over here is we are trying to collect it and then uh, by specifying the result set we add a result set value with again uh, the parameter name again should be a numeric value and it would be starting from zero and we are mapping this value or the result set returned by the ad hoc tsql statement to this variable to the var customer name variable that's all we are doing so in a way the the statement that is written will again have or, or, or uh, take two input values and it will return the customer name as a result set value for a oledb connection so i think this is quite clear and and what i have done here is i have just added a simple uh, script task which is going to uh, use the message box and and show us the name that it has it has actually captured from uh, this sql statement so let's execute the container once again right so as you can see it has captured the results and it's, and it's giving us the name jenny so okay uh, let's just try to change the state so that for we'll get some different name for the next the next example again is a adio.net connection and how we are passing retrieving a value so for here in adio.net connection it has the capability to use uh, or, or to uh, gather or keep the value in output uh, parameter so what we have done is we have again created three parameters which are mapped uh, with a name so uh, so this is the state value which is mapping to the state uh, variable amount and the name uh, and this is of output type you declare it as an output type and there is no result set as such here it's not required as such uh, so if you look at the query you would see we have simply uh, hard coded or, or mapped the values of the names of the parameters that we have actually specified in the input mapping or, or the parameter mapping tab so this is the amount this is the state and the name uh, with this we will be able to fetch uh, we'll be able to pass something as input and also fetch an output from the uh, from the name from the query so let's try to execute this query again oh, oh sorry this container again and we'll get the name as tom perfectly fine remember the name was because i have changed uh, the state from california to arizona arizona now this was how you would pass for ad hoc tsql statements now moving on what if you have a stored procedure of stored procedure of something like this which exe which takes a parameter which takes two input parameters and and, ma and has a output parameter uh, which is uh, giving an output of a name of the customer now let's go and take a look for uh, oledb and adio.net connections also we have this stored procedure which is using oledb connection uh, sorry this sql task which is using oledb connection and we have the parameters mapped so for parameters when we are using a stored procedure oledb is able to return you output and uh, when it is a tsql statement ad hoc tsql statement you will have to use a result set uh, in any other case oledb will not be able to give you or, or, or use output uh, clause for ad hoc tsql's but when you are using a stored procedure it's as simple as that you just need to map the question marks the first is the first input parameter second is the parameter and the third is the output with where we have actually simply mentioned the output clause which means the third question mark will be will be mapped to the output 
variable of the customer name type and also remember we are again using it as or, or numbering it to 0 1 and 2 so these are the few compli uh, complications of the differences when we are handling OLEDB or ADO.NET connections just be careful and, and you would be able to execute them so that's uh, this is the settings that you have to do for execute SQL task let's run the container perfectly fine now lastly let's just take a look at the ADO uh, way of executing a store procedure uh, again we have an ADO connection and we have parameters here we will declare the three parameters with a name and each of them will map the same way and in the stored procedure uh, clause you will have to simply uh, replace the parameter names with output uh, and, and the output clause and it will specify the only last thing that is uh, I would like to uh, help you understand is is query stored procedure this setting is only enabled in ADO.NET connections yet this works only when you are running you are trying to run a stored procedure which is of the type which is uh, which does not have or, or accept any input or output parameters so in this case let's keep it to false and run the package we are able to run the package now in another case even though it is a stored procedure if even even though if this is a stored procedure and, and having let's just enable the is query stored procedure to true and let's see what happens this will fail it will it will say cannot find stored procedure because ADO.NET uh, connection manager is not used uh, uh, to handling this parameter parameterized stored procedures execution when this is set to true so just remember this uh, and, and you should be through with uh, your execute SQL task configurations and, and passing parameters I, I sincerely hope that this comparison is helpful to you to understand uh, and passing parameters and what are the different constraints uh, while in, in different scenarios when we are using ad hoc T-SQLs stored procedures uh, with input, without input and how we map the result sets. Thank you friends.